Hello everybody, my name's Tank Runner, and welcome to another episode of Drawing Roulettes and World Building. A few months ago, I held a contest on my Discord, asking people to submit Pokemon designs for an upcoming video I was going to make. I told everyone that if their design was picked, I would redraw the Pokemon for my next project, and if I really liked the final result, their design might even make it into my own Australian-themed Pokemon region that we've been working on here for the last year, with full credit for coming up with the original design. When I went through to select the winners, I wasn't necessarily looking for the best designs or the best artwork, but the ones that grabbed my attention the most, the ones that could potentially benefit the most from a redesign, and honestly, just the ones that I really wanted to draw for myself. And you guys made it really hard for me. These fake mon were amazing, and I can't wait to do this again. Also, one last thing before we get started. Unlike my usual Pokemon videos, I have not written a Pokedex entry. I thought since these designs were Discord submitted, it might be fun to have the audience get involved as well. So, if you like a specific design, or you get some fun ideas while watching the video, make sure to leave a comment down below. Whether you only leave a few brainstorming ideas, or you end up writing a whole Pokedex entry, your comment could be selected to become the lore for the fake mon we cover today. Let's get started. The first Pokemon line I selected today was submitted by Discord member Tony the Geek. The general vibe, the color, the combination of animals, I loved this Pokemon line, but I felt like it might have been a little too over-designed. It has a lot of stylistic shapes on it, which is fine if that's what you're going for, but it begins to look a little cluttered. I thought these designs were great, but could be even better if simplified just a little bit. I started with this little bear otter fella and figured the first thing to do was to alter its pose, giving it a little more energy and making it feel a little more like a baby Pokemon. Then I removed some of the features that I wasn't super crazy about, not just to simplify the design, but to help the silhouette pop. After some time, I moved my focus to the second evolution. As I was drawing the first stage, I was getting flooded with ideas for the final evolution, so I wanted to make sure that I at least put in a few key design elements to connect them all together. Just as before, I simplified the design and pushed the personality more. I did change some of its body parts, uh, leaning more in the direction of a fish, but decided to keep the pose as unchanged as I could. It ended up in a goofier place than I originally wanted, so hopefully Tony is okay with that. Second evolutions tend to look like the awkward teenager of the Pokemon's growth, so I think it fits.
For the final evolution, the first thing I noticed was that tail. Obviously, they wanted to have a tail in the design, but it looked like maybe they weren't sure what specifically they wanted to do with it. I kept working on the whole line, not wanting to push it too much, because I felt like whatever I'd come up with would be better if it came up naturally, until I decided to push the tail fin design to look more like a lobster or a shrimp tail, which then gave me the idea to change some of the fur into shell, which then, of course, allowed me to give him BIG MEATY CLAWS! I know that water ice types aren't great, but to me, with the color palette and the massive fur pelts, it looked like a creature that would feel right at home swimming through near freezing bodies of water. And we could always spice it up with some abilities to level the playing field. Tony, thank you so much for sharing your designs with me in the Tonks. I love the creativity you bring with your artwork, and I hope I've been able to do your original concept justice. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Next up are the amazing designs by Discord member Wood Snacks, and this one grabbed my eye almost immediately. A Windigo-esque monster. For those of you that have been around for a while, you know that I absolutely love Windigos, so I could not pass this up. The main thing that I wanted to change about this line was the color choice. Obviously, a lot of this is caused by the picture that was taken off of another screen, but the Pokemon were way too dark, and I wanted to fix that, but as you can see, I can't really tell what I'm looking at here. I'm losing a lot of details in those blacks and the dark browns. I used Photoshop to brighten up the image as much as possible to get a general idea of what was happening, and then decided to have a little fun with it. With the second evolution, I still wanted the design to retain at least some of its intimidation, but wanted to try and pokemon it, if that makes sense. Shrink it down a little bit, round off some of its points, add a few brighter tones and saturated colors. 
just like I did with the first form, I had to take some creative liberties with what exactly was being shrouded under all that shadow. And I think in the end, I get into a pretty solid spot. I had a hard time picking the typing for this one, but ended up going dark ground type. I know there's a lot of other types that this line looks like it could be a part of, but dark and ground felt like the most predominant. And we could always give it a pretty wide array of types in its moveset. Wood Snacks, thank you for taking part in the contest. I hope you're happy with my redesigns. I tried to keep it as close to your originals as I could. Keep up the great work, and I look forward to seeing what awesome stuff you drop in the Discord next. Winner number three is Discord member SD. For this one, I was interested in the barbecue concept and the general design was pretty good, but I felt like it could be improved in the line work and the proportions to make the final evolution look more boar-like. This little guy was originally based on a pig leg. You can see the tail looks like a hoof. I wanted to keep that, but make it a little more subtle, add a little splash of color, and unrelated to that, I kind of wanted to make him happier. So I tried a few designs where he was smiling, but that felt weird. So I eventually took it back, but I didn't want him to be as super sad as the original. So I went with a more puzzled look, not completely confused, but just a little bit of a like, I'm sorry, what did you just say? The changes I made to the second evolution were mostly in the proportions of the body. I made the head bigger, rounded out the body, shrunk the legs, and then I, I tried to keep the tail, but after the changes I made, I just couldn't get it to look right, so I scrapped it. Additionally, I changed up the grill marks that it had on its body to look more like something that was extremely hot to the touch and less open flame. Maybe in instances where it gets really angry or it's charging at its opponent is when fire shoots out of them.
I'm pretty happy with how these two turned out, but I have a weird feeling that something is missing. Like, maybe I'll come back to this design someday and give it a third evolution, because I think this little pig might have some extra growing left to do. SD, great work, super fun idea, and I hope you continue coming up with really creative concepts like this. I'm very interested in seeing where you go from here. Make sure to leave a comment letting me know if you like the changes I made to your Pokemon. The last contest winner for today is Boreal Mind. Their concept actually fit my region really well, basing their submission on a Bunyip, a mythical creature in Australian folklore. I haven't gotten a chance to make any Pokemon for my region based on mythology yet, so I was really excited to give this one a go. First thing I wanted to do was to make a few changes to the face. I still wanted it to be a little obscured by the long patches of grass, but I thought it would be interesting to see a bit more of this creature. I wanted it to look almost innocent, as if it uses its camouflage as a means to get close to things it wants to investigate and less to get the drop on its prey. Again, just like other Pokemon today, this one could go a few different ways when it comes to typing. I can't really decide between Grass Fairy or Ground Fairy type. I don't think there's ever been a Pokemon that could potentially be a different type every time you catch it, has there? Maybe that could be an interesting gimmick for this single stage Pokemon. It has a few different combinations of typing, making up for the fact that it doesn't evolve. Boreal Mind, I loved your take on this Swamp Monster. I hope you liked mine as well. It's the first single evolution Pokemon I've done, and I couldn't think of a better design to take that slot. Let me know how I did, and also tell me if you got a name for this thing. 77 Pokemon down, 74 to go. It's official. We're halfway done. How do you guys think I did? I made some pretty big changes to some of the designs today. Hopefully you guys agree that they were for the better. If your Pokemon wasn't selected for this video, don't worry. I had a lot of fun working on this project, so I'll be doing another one of these contests in the future. If you missed your chance to submit a design the first time round, feel free to stop by the Discord and post in the Tank Draws Your Pokemon channel, link in the description. I know this video probably feels weird compared to my normal Pokemon videos, but I wanted to mix up the structure and try something new. I plan on continuing to work on my region's roster, but through other Pokemon related content like this. Big shout out to my one and only patron, Arc Wolf, Boys Support Boys. If you want to keep on top of my projects and be told when I release new stuff, be sure to check out my Twitter or come talk to me over on the Discord. But until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.